everyone, my name is Stephen Walker and welcome to 40 Questions. And tonight I am interviewing Matthew Lindsay. Hi, nice to be here. Nice to meet you, Matthew. Nice to meet you too. Thank you for coming. Not a problem. First question, where are you from? I'm from New Zealand. New Zealand. And where is New Zealand? Uh, New Zealand is in Oceania. It's southeast of Australia. Southeast of Australia. Yeah. Okay, and the nationality of people from New Zealand? Uh, people from New Zealand, uh, New Zealanders, um, or Kiwis. Or Kiwi. Okay. Kiwis. I've heard of Kiwis. <laughs> yeah. And so why? Why Kiwi? Uh, because of our, our national bird, the, the Kiwi, bird. Um, not the fruit. Okay. The population of New Zealand, do you know the population of the country? Yeah, it's around four and a half million. Four and a half million. Yeah. And New Zealand, uh, it's, it's two islands, yeah. a north um, and a south. Yep, yeah, North Island, South Island, not much imagination there. Um, <laughs> so we've got lots of space and not many people. Okay, well that sounds nice actually. Oh yeah. And the capital of New Zealand is? The capital of New Zealand is Wellington. Wellington. North or South Island? It's at the bottom of the North Island. Okay. And what is the population of Wellington? Uh, in the greater Wellington area, around 400,000. In the city itself, 200,000. Wow, well, so it's, it's quite small. It's small. Um, biggest city is Auckland. That's got millions. <laughs> okay, <laughs> millions. Two, three, four million? Maybe two million. Maybe in two. The greater Auckland area. And Auckland is North, so, North yeah. Island? Yeah, so about half the country is in the Auckland area. Okay. Uh, in Unit 2, we talk about shapes, sizes, and appearances, mm -hmm. and question 6 will be the flag. Well, what color is the flag of New Zealand? Uh, it's mainly blue with some white and red. Okay, red, white, and blue. Yeah. Or blue, white, and red. <laughs> <laughs> and can you give us a description of the flag? What does the flag look like? Um, up in the top left corner is the Union Jack from England. Okay. Um, and then there's a mainly blue background with red stars. Um, it looks very similar to the Australian flag. We have red stars, they have white stars. I see. Now the stars in the blue, is, is there a certain shape that it's... Uh, it's in a... Well, it's the Southern Cross. It's the Southern so Cross. So basically, it's a star constellation you can see in the south that you can't see. The Southern Hemisphere, yeah. you can see it, yes. but not in the north. Yes. Yeah. Okay, that's interesting. Um, and with the Australian flag, they have an extra star because they think they can see it. <laughs> or we're, we're just more simple. <laughs> <laughs> Moving forward into appearances of people. If I go to New Zealand, what does the majority of people from New Zealand look like that I would uh, meet? Um, well, majority-wise, probably around 85% of the people look like me. They're European. Their families are from Europe. European descent. Um, but we have we have Maori, we have Pacific Islanders, we have Asians. We've got everything. Yeah, a lot of immigrants these days. Everyone's an immigrant in New Zealand. Okay. Now, why is that? Well, people have only been there for around seven hundred years. Seven hundred years. So, so it's, 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 a, it's a quite it's quite a young yeah. country. Well, New Zealand is very new. Thus, the <laughs> name. And Zeal. No, okay. If it's New Zealand, Zealand is based uh, on the first European to discover New Zealand was Abel Tasman from. The Netherlands and Zealand is one of the regions in the Netherlands. Okay, I did not know that. Oh. That's interesting. So you mentioned Maori and South Pacific Islanders. The question, question 10, is what minorities live in New Zealand. Can you tell us a bit more about some minorities or, or a bit more about the, the Maori okay. population? Okay, sure. The, well, the biggest minority are the Maori people. Mm -hmm. They came to New Zealand in canoes about 700 years ago to discover a country full of birds. And so the, the Maoris came from 
Where? Uh, they came from up in the Pacific Islands. So Pacific from, Islands. From Polynesia. And that's quite a distance. Well, they would have saw arms with all the rowing. Yeah. Well, traditionally, the Maori originated in Taiwan, uh, and okay. basically over the centuries, they had moved down and around and across the Pacific. Right. And finally, they found New Zealand. Well, lucky for you, I guess. And Definitely. Right. Moving into Unit 3, uh, food, tastes, and ingredients. If we were to go to New Zealand and we want to try an authentic dish, what traditional food is eaten in New Zealand? Um, well, it's such a new country. Um, we have lots of different foods, but for a traditional dish, probably the Maori honey. Um, honey? Yeah. Can it, you spell that? H-A-N-G-I. Uh, honey. So okay. basically they put heated stones under the ground, okay. and the food goes on top, and it gets covered up, and basically the food gets steamed until it's cooked. Okay, so that's the method. Yeah. It's the method of cooking. Is there any specific dish that they... Well, you go to Ahangi, mm -hmm. and okay. you, uh, back originally they would have had fish, chicken, and kumara, um, but nowadays that's expanded from European influences to mm -hmm. pork and potatoes and anything. Question 13 is how does it taste? So in my imagination I would say barbecue comes to mind. What, how, how does, uh, if you invited me to mm -hmm. a hangi, what can I expect my taste buds to experience? Okay, um, because it's cooked, what, well, because it's steamed, mm. the, the meat is very soft, it just falls off the bone, um, and it's got a bit of an earthy taste. Earthy? How, if I, if I go to a hangi, how does, what would I be smelling when I'm, when I'm there? Well, whilst it's cooking, you're not really smelling a lot because it's under the ground. Can, can you smell the food cooking, or is no, it more smoky? It's only until the very end, at the, at the very when end. When you open it? When, it, when you open it up. Okay, then let's open it. How does that smell? Give me a, give me, how does that smell? Smells delicious. Smells <laughs> delicious. <laughs> I, I, okay. wish, I wish I had a better answer. And I've never cooked this style, mm -hmm. so the texture, what, what, Cooking in rock, what kind of texture can you expect when you open up uh, this, this package? Uh, very soft, very tender, because it is cooked very slowly mm -hmm. with the steam, and so it's, it, just, it just falls apart. It falls apart. It's, e it's very easy to eat. Yeah, it sounds, it sounds delicious. I'd love to try it. Unit 4 is weather, seasons, and landscapes. New Zealand, again, we said it's two different islands, the north and the south. The question is, what is the landscape like in New Zealand? Can you give us a basic description from north to south yep, of, of, your, of your homeland? Yep. Uh, New Zealand is very mountainous. We have mountains basically running from north to south um, because of we've got the Pacific tectonic plate and the Australian tectonic plate and they basically push them together, they create the mountains. Okay. And so, um, we've got mountains and, yeah, oh, and volcanoes. Are there, do you have plains? Do you have any desert? Do you have any... Um, uh, definitely we have plains. So it's, it's, it's just, it's continuous mountains all well, the way well, through? Well, down, down the spine of the country is mountains. Mm -hmm. and along the coasts, yeah, we've got, it's just, it's we've got plains. Flatter coastal um, area. It depends where you are, Hawke's Bay, where I'm from. We've got a lot of flat land where we grow a lot of a lot of orchards, a lot of vineyards. We make a lot of wine. Um, sounds nice. We drink a lot of wine. You drink a lot of wine. Okay, well, sounds nicer. Definitely. You, you enjoy a tipple. O occasionally. Occasionally. Getting back to landscape, yeah. though. North and South Island, how do they differ with the, with the landscape, or are they, or are they similar? Um, both are similar in that they've got like the central spine. Um, the South Island, though, is the main example of the two plates colliding. 
And so we've got the Southern Alps, which it's Southern you, Alps? Yep, yeah, Southern Alps. And very, very tall, lots of snow. Um, if you've seen the Lord of the Rings movies, mm -hmm. yeah. you've seen the Southern Alps. Okay. Um, so more glacier. Uh, we have a lot of more glaciers. Yes. Uh, in the, in the more south, we've got, dramatic. we've got glaciers, we've got fjords. Fjords. Um, and it's, well, some of the areas are so remote, no one's been there. Okay. Um, if no one's been there. That's some that. areas, it's too, well, you can't walk in. It's too far. Interesting. Um, and if your plane crashes, well, too bad. <laughs> now, New Zealand is southern hemisphere, mm -hmm. and if, we, if you don't know, the seasons are actually opposite. So mm -hmm. if it's yes. winter in Korea, it will be summer in New, summer Zealand. In New Zealand. How many seasons are in New Zealand? Well, we have four seasons, like you have everywhere. Four. Um, well, some not are, everywhere. I mean, some, I mean, there are quite a few countries that don't have four seasons. Well, okay, yeah, some Closer places. to the equator, I well, guess. Yeah. But I mean, um, in New Zealand, sometimes we have four seasons in one day. In one day? Yes. The weather can be very, very, very changeable. Blue sky, sun, and then the front goes through, and you've got hail. You might have snow. You can have anything. Um, throughout the throughout North and South yeah, Island? It can be very changeable. Um, That's interesting. We get a lot of our weather it comes from Antarctica. Right. And there is nothing between Antarctica and New Zealand. Okay. So when a southerly hits, you know that. A southerly. A southerly is a storm, a wind. Uh, yeah, yeah, basically, uh, yeah. Winds that come up from the south. And so if you're on the west side of New Zealand, um, the weather is a lot worse uh, okay. than the east side, and it hits the central mountains, and it just dumps the weather on the on, western on side. On the western side. And my side is nice and sunny. Now you're from? I'm from Hawke's Bay. Hawke's in, Bay. In the North Island. In the North Island. Four seasons, mm -hmm. which is or was your favorite season? Uh, to be in New Zealand. Yeah. My my favorite season in Hawke's Bay is definitely summer. Summertime. It's hot, it's dry, um, not like here in Korea where it's humid in the mm -hmm. summer. It's hot, it's dry. If you get too hot, you get into the shade, and it's great. Right? Hot and dry. Mm. How about disasters, natural disasters in New Zealand? It's a mountainous country, and Antarctica is just below. What what kind of natural disasters does New Zealand experience? Um, well, like Japan, we're on the Ring of Fire. The Ring of Fire, which is so what? basically where all the tectonic plates are bumping into each other. So because of that, we have lots of earthquakes. Okay. And in the last few years, we've had quite a few big earthquakes. Uh huh. Uh, we lost. Most of one city, which which uh, city? Christchurch. Um, really, Christchurch. A lot of the buildings collapsed. A lot of the ground liquefied. Wow. It basically just turned to mud. Um, and yeah, but then just in the last year or so, there's been another big earthquake, and as a result of that, Kaikoura, which is a very popular tourist town became isolated mm -hmm. because the, the, the highway, which is next to the mountain, all the landslides came down. Okay, and so you have landslides, huge, earthquakes. Yeah. Well, landslides because of the earthquake. Right. Um, and Any other natural disasters? Uh, we had flooding. Flooding. Quite often in mm -hmm. winter. Um, too much rain, the rivers get too high, and then suddenly it's, landscape. it's all over. Do you get tornadoes or anything uh, like that down in We in get cyclones. Cyclones. So, uh, yeah, tropical cyclones uh -huh. coming down from the north, but they're not very common. Holidays, Matthew. Uh, what would you say is an important holiday in New Zealand that we should know about? Um, I think the most important holiday is Anzac Day. Anzac. Uh, um, okay. It stands for Australia-New Zealand Armed Corps. Um, it's the 
it's a shared Memorial Day for New Zealand and Australia um, soldiers who have fought in wars or okay. in peacekeeping. Um, we fought together, we died together. Mm -hmm. And um, what date is uh, Anzac Day? Anzac Day is April 25th. April 25th. Mm -hmm. All right. Moving into Unit 5, ports, transportation, and accommodation. What is a uh, main international airport that we would likely fly to? Okay. Uh, the the main airport is Auckland Airport. Auckland. Um, Auckland is the biggest city, and so that's where almost everyone will fly that's into the, there. That is the international, and that again, that's on the North Island. Yep, near the top of the North Island. Okay. And so we fly into Auckland, and what are some modes of transportation that we can take once we arrive in in, in the country? Uh, well, there's road, there's rail, there's air. Um, all of our rail is above ground. We don't have subway systems. No subways. Um, I think it's because of the earthquakes mm. and the geothermal. Yeah. It's just easier to have it. On Not surface. wise. But there is there is a good rail system used in New Zealand. Uh, mainly, it is for transporting goods. Okay. Um, long distance, um, yeah, long distance passenger rail isn't as common as it used to be. Okay, but as a traveler, mm -hmm. you no, you can't. There is a train. There is a that, one line that, that goes that, that will north take south, you from south. Auckland down to Wellington. Um, but there was one one service a day. And then right. getting from north to South Island, what is the best well, transport? Well, then you jump on the Inter Islander Ferry. There's a nice ferry there. Um, it's good. And, and how long does that take from north to uh, south? About three hours. Three hours. Ferry. Um, and if the weather's good, it's gorgeous. The scenery is amazing. If the weather's bad, mm. it's a roller coaster. Right. So when we are in New Zealand and need a place to stay, can you tell us what is a nice hotel to stay at in New Zealand? Uh, my favorite hotel is the Intercontinental in the Wellington. Intercontinental in Wellington. Um, when I was in university, I used to work there. Okay. And it's well, it well back then it was the only five-star hotel in Wellington. Five star. It was the best. Can you tell us a few amenities that uh, we can expect when we check in? Sure. Uh, we have a pool, a gym, uh, the club lounge is great. Mm -hmm. um, there's always a chauffeur driven limo to drive you somewhere if you pay for it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay. Um, and great stuff. I know a lot of travelers come to New Zealand and they're not going to be staying at five stars. Uh, you, can, can you tell our viewers maybe a, a bit more low budget place? Can we find a lot of hostels? Uh, there, there are some hostels, some? but I've never been in one. You've never been in one? No. <laughs> well, I guess I mean, you're from there, so why would you? I prefer the intercontinental. <laughs> Question 25, we're talking about currency. And the currency in New Zealand is... The New Zealand dollar. The New Zealand dollar. Mm -hmm. And do you know the exchange rate in American dollars? Yep. Uh, one New Zealand dollar gets you 76 cents American. 76 cents. So it's a lot better than when I was young. Mm -hmm. When I went to America in 88, it was 50 cents wow. to the dollar. Okay. So... 76 cents is a lot better for me. Yeah. Uh, moving into Unit 6 is talking about greetings, gestures, and customs. Matthew, we are now in New Zealand and we meet a Kiwi. What do we say? What What is a typical greeting used in New Zealand? Uh, two options. Uh, you can say Kia ora, which is Maori for Hello. Okay. Um, kia ora. Yeah, kia ora. Um, or g'day. G'day. G'day, mate. G'day, mate. Um, basically, g'day is, what, the English greeting, um, good day, yeah. which is very formal, 
and well, we just shortened it, made it informal. G'day. G'day. And the Maori is okay. Kiora. Kiora. Now, if I'm if I'm a traveler and I'm in New Zealand, is it is it appropriate to say that to someone, or is it a bit odd? No. Um. That they they would they would that receive that. They may right? find it. Amusing. Okay. Um, but no, no offense. No offense. Would be taken. All right. Well, that's good to know. And gestures. Gestures are very different in different countries around the planet. What gestures can we use in New Zealand that are appropriate, that are polite? Um. Well, the likes of thumbs up. Um, thumbs up. When something's good. Um. Yeah. We have the, the head toss for, uh, oh yeah, you see someone you know across the street. The head toss. Hi. Um, which means? Literally, I see you, I recognize okay. you, I know you. If you don't know them, um, possibly not a good thing to do. <laughs> <coughs> any any hand gestures that, okay, I mean, thumbs up, thumbs yeah. down is bad. Um, that, okay. We wouldn't. Uh, you don't, you don't, you no, be okay symbol? No, because that could be getting into a drinking game. A drinking a game? A drinking game. Well, that could be thing. good. <laughs> Depending on who you are and where yeah. you are. Okay, then let's move into the next question, which is uh, question 28. What gestures are impolite in New Zealand? What should we be careful of not doing? Well, um, obviously, um, with your hand, you can choose the wrong finger to point at something. And what, um, to point at something? Well, if you're wanting to point at something, I mean, I've just pointed with, with my index, index finger. That works. Um, That's okay. If you point with your middle finger, um, that will go the wrong way, like it is in many countries. Well, most countries, pointing it up, is offensive. Mm. Like pointing it at someone mm. is. Do you do? Well, whether it's pointing at someone um, or pointing at something that's up on the wall with the um, middle finger. The middle yeah, finger yeah. is generally rude. Yeah, far easier just to always use the index. Use your index, or use just use your hand. Use your hand. Any anything else that you know? Not uh, that I can think of. Not you can. No, really, not too many. No. So pretty much. You're you're pretty free We're, and open society in New Zealand. It's very verbal. Very verbal. Mm. Okay, that's interesting actually, because a lot of language actually is quite physical. Okay, moving into question twenty nine. What is a custom that is practiced in New Zealand? Um, a lot of customs from New Zealand mm -hmm. uh, come from Maori culture. Okay. Uh, one of them is. The haka, which okay. is a Maori war dance that nowadays we use um, before the start of a sports sporting event. Mm -hmm. um, the teams will do a haka to challenge the other side. And but traditionally, the haka was it was a war dance. Um, basically, you were trying to scare the other the other group of people. Okay. Which is very aggressive. And then one other custom, speaking of Maori, mm -hmm. now the Maoris uh, well in New Zealand the majority of people would say hello, good day mate and shake hands. Mm -hmm. Is that uh, correct? Yes. Uh, more for Maoris when they greet or obviously Kiora. Um, but they will also share uh honey. Um, uh -huh. Which is basically where you you touch noses, mm -hmm. and in a sense, it is supposed to be you know you are sharing one breath. Sharing a breath. And so, if you are sharing a breath, then you cannot be enemies. That's what makes culture so fascinating. Definitely. And another thing that makes cultures different is religion. Uh, the the thirtieth question of of the journal is about religion. What religions are practiced in New Zealand? Okay, um, many New Zealanders 
aren't religious. Okay. Um, I think in the last census it was around 50 percent. About half. Um, maybe a little lower. Don't practice any form of religion. Okay. Um, those that do, almost all are Christian. Um, there are obviously the different types of Christianity. Mm -hmm. um, and um, almost all are Christian of some sort or other. We also have um, Hindus, Buddhists, Sikhs, and I think that's about it. Yeah. As, as, as more immigrants come, yeah. more religions yeah. are, are introduced. Definitely. Right. Unit 7 is Landmarks, Activities, and Things to Do. Matthew, where is a good place to go sightseeing in New Zealand? Well, th the entire country is great for sightseeing. Right. Um, if you've watched the Lord of the Rings movies or right. Hobbit, mm -hmm. um, that was filmed throughout the country. Throughout, um, the, throughout both islands? Yeah. Okay. So basically you can go anywhere and you've got amazing scenery, you've got mountains, you've got rivers, you've got lakes. Um, it's all good. It's all good. How about landmarks? What are some famous landmarks that we can find in New Zealand? Um, if you're in Auckland, mm -hmm. there's the Sky Tower, okay. um, which is very tall. When you're a long way away from Auckland, you can see the Sky Tower. Okay. Um, it's, it's, I believe, the tallest building in the Southern Hemisphere. Wow. Um, so that's Auckland, Wellington, we have the Beehive, which is where the Prime Minister works. Okay. Um, and it's called the Beehive because it looks like a beehive. Okay. Um, it's, that's not the official name, but well... It's the nickname that... It, uh, it's, it's basically a round building that just goes up and it, it looks like a beehive. Uh, okay, activities. We are in New Zealand and looking for something to do. Can you tell us a few activities that are popular in, in New Zealand? Um, a lot of people when they visit New Zealand like to be scared. Really? Um, and so in New Zealand um, we invented bungee jumping, uh, okay. we invented the jet boat, we invented sky jump. Wow, and so, so a lot of extreme yeah, sports. extreme sports, all things that will get your heart pumping. Tell, can you tell us what is a good place to do an activity that you enjoy the most? Can um, you choose one of these activities and tell us where we can go to do it? Okay, almost all of them except the sky jump. Uh, you can do it in Queenstown, in the South Queenstown. Island. Okay. Um, it's the adventure tourism capital of New Zealand. Okay, Queenstown. Yeah. All right, that's good to know. So it's got it's got those activities. It's got a big lake. Mm -hmm. It's very nice. It's got the mountains. At the moment, you can go skiing, um, and they've got lots of great wine. Wine and extreme sports. I don't know. I mean, is it a good combination? <laughs> well, at, at the end of the day, a, a, oh, okay. a, a nice right. Pinot Noir is good. <laughs> All right. Well, okay. All right, so obviously there are many different people, many different cultures and country men coming to New Zealand. Matthew, where is a good place to go people watching in New Zealand? Um, well, we don't have that many people to watch. Only, I mean, there, are, only, there are people wandering only, through the yeah, land. So only four and a half million people. So they um, congregate somewhere. Yeah, where, um, where is no, a good a, place? A good place to people watch is in Wellington, okay. um, on Lampton Quay. Um, basically, because it's such a small city, mm. um, most people, if they're moving around the city, are walking. Okay. Um, and so whether you're going from your office on the foreshore or your office downtown, You'll often just walk because it's faster than driving at times. Mm -hmm. And so sit in a cafe on Lampton Key and get a coffee and watch the world go by. Yeah, and watch, watch the world go by. Exactly. Well said. Okay, the last unit is Unit 8 already, uh, which is music, pop culture, and famous people. 
in New Zealand, I know there's all kinds of music that people enjoy, but can you tell us uh, what kinds of music do you remember being popular in New Zealand? Um, most music in New Zealand is in English. Um, we have both music from New Zealand itself, okay. but then we also bring in a lot of music from America, from England, right. from Australia. Um, so let, let's focus on New Zealand. Can you mm -hmm. tell us a bit about New Zealand-based or music uh, that originated in New Zealand? Um, well, best example um, is the singer Lord who is very, very young still. Okay. But when she was still only, I think, 17, she released her debut single, which was Royals, which went on to become a huge hit around the world. And what genre is this her music? It's kind of a bit alternative and a bit different. Um, different. It's a, bit, it's a bit indie. It's yeah. It's definitely not pop. Okay. Um, her dance style is <coughs> unique. Um, but yeah, and she's just released her second album. Um, it took her several years to write it. Okay. And it's it's getting great reviews. All right. Good for her and good for New Zealand. Question thirty-seven is famous people. So, Lord is a famous musician. Mm -hmm. uh, what famous people are from New Zealand? Um, if we go old school, um, the first person to climb Mount Everest mm -hmm. was Sir Edmund Hillary. Sir um, Edmund Hillary. That was back in the 19, early 1950s. Right. Um, if we want to go even earlier, um, Sir Ernest Rutherford, who was the first person to split the atom. Wow. Um, okay. So that was a great gift we gave the world. Um, yeah, th thanks New Zealand. Uh, nowadays, <laughs> um, Peter Jackson, who produced the Lord of the Rings, the right. Hobbit, and many other movies. And he's, he's, he was born in New Zealand. He's, he's a New Zealander. Right. Um, we made the movies in New Zealand, and yeah. Um, also, in golf, Lydia Ko. Okay. Um, was the number one woman golfer for a significant period, oh, and the number one rugby team in the world. Okay. Is the All Blacks. Is the All Blacks. From New Zealand. This is why I am actually wearing this color shirt. It's, uh, I, I do, I do like the All Blacks. So do I. Yeah. The next question is question 38. Who is the president or the leader of New Zealand? Does New Zealand have a president? Uh, no, we don't have a president uh, because we're um, based on the English model. Okay. We have parliament, okay. so we have a prime minister. Um, the current prime minister is Bill English. Um, he's only recently become prime minister after John Key retired. Subcultures, Matthew. Are there any unique subcultures in New Zealand? Well, um, I think within New Zealand, well, everyone is new. Um, in right. the last 700 years, everyone has arrived. Most people have arrived a lot more recently. Um, so you go into Wellington or Auckland, mm. and it's a melting pot. Um, okay. So many different types of food from you know, Asia, from the Pacific Islands, from Europe. We've got everything. Um, and so it's very hard to just pick one specific area. Last question, Matthew. Are you ready? I hope so. You hope so. Uh, it is question 40, and it is about the flower. Does New Zealand have a national flower? Um, we don't really have a national flower as such. Um, we have the silver fern, which is unique to New Zealand, um, and any New Zealand sporting team, um, you'll see the silver fern on their shirts as their logo, and it makes them very, very easily recognizable. All right, Matthew, before you leave, I have to ask you one more question that's not in the journal. And it's about 
an icon of New Zealand that when people think of your country comes to mind, and that is the the kiwi, the kiwi bird. Mm. Uh, ju just the kiwi. The kiwi, not kiwi bird. Kiwi. Well, I mean, a kiwi is a fruit. It, it's uh, also uh, the, 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 that's, the that's nationality. Our, that's where our language differences come. Okay. in. Okay. The fruit is a kiwi fruit. The bird is a kiwi. Is a kiwi. I am a kiwi. And you are a kiwi, but not the bird. Mm. Well, more like the bird than the fruit. All right. <laughs> Touche. So, can you tell us a bit more about the kiwi? Okay, well, kiwis don't fly mm. um, because they don't have wings. And why don't they have wings? It's a bird. Well, for millions of years in New Zealand, there were no people. There were no cats, no dogs, no rats. And so nothing ate the kiwi. Okay. It could just walk around and eat. So and what would around. what would kiwis eat? Um, well, Typical bird like well, worms and yeah. bugs? Well I mean they've got the very the very long beak mm. with nostrils at the very end and that allowed them to put their beak deep underground. Okay. And once it was underground they could sniff out where the bugs were okay. and just pull the insect out and eat it. And how about uh, the kiwi population now on, on on uh, the islands, is it is it is it healthy or is um, it endangered? With the well, with people arriving and, and cats, cats and, and dogs, population was dropping dramatically. Mm -hmm. um, at one stage, I think we were down to seventy thousand kiwi. Okay. Across the wild. Country. Yeah. Right. Um, but through significant <coughs> conversation, conservation mm -hmm. efforts, um, the numbers are just going up and up and up. Um, a lot of areas we are making free of predators, um, so there are no cats, no dogs, no rats in the area. And there are no snakes in New Zealand, is that correct? Mm -hmm. or? Definitely no snakes. Definitely no snakes. So, there is a country. If you don't like snakes, New Zealand is the country for you. Mm. Matthew, thank you very much. I appreciate your time. It's been my pleasure. All right, and I hope that uh, we've learned. I, I definitely have learned more than I knew, and I, I, I've even traveled to New Zealand. So, um, thank you for joining us. My name is Stephen Walker, and this is Tell Me About It. Until next time. Bye-bye.